So, um, this video is about punk style typography. Um, we're going to do this in Photoshop, so we're looking at setting up our document for this. So it will be an A3 document. I'm going to name the document punk typography. Happy with my resolution at 300, you could go to 400 if you wanted to. And we might be printing this out later, so I'm going to go to CMYK. So that's my document ready to go. Now, um, we're going to be looking at sort of three main techniques here, or three main styles, sort of inspired by these kind of examples that we've got here. So, first thing we need to do is go to our text tool and type out punk design. Now, this first one that we're going to go for is sort of a graffiti style. So we want it to look a little bit handwritten. So this font really is not very appropriate for that. So you can see in Photoshop, you get here a filter. Now, handwritten fonts, are you've got an option for that, or you could look in the script font section. Um, so you can have a look through at these different fonts and see how you get on. And see what they look like. Now, not entirely happy for those, so I'm going to have a look at the handwritten ones. And actually, I'm going to go for this sort of marker felt because I quite like the thickness of that. Um, I've got it sort of centre aligned. You could go right aligned, but generally when we hand write, we tend to do it that way. I'm also going to force this to be a little bit slanted, a little bit italic. So I've got a, a panel here which is called character. If you don't see that on your screen, you can go to window and character and it will open that panel for you. And then you can drop it into here or whatever. Now, you can see I've got an option here which lets me sort of slant it. So I'm just going to select that. I've got it at sort of 150 points um, and I've actually changed the gap to 120 so it's a little bit closer to Deva. So normally it would be on 150 which you can see is a lot sort of further apart. Um, I want it to look a little bit closer together, a little bit more conjoined. So we've got that there. So I'm happy with that. We're going to go for black and that's all good with me. So I'm going to get zoomed in here. Now when you're looking at spray paint style fonts they tend to have those sort of characteristic drips um, and splashes. So in order to create those, we're going to use this pen tool here. Now, I want it to be black, so I want it to be the same as my letters. And I want to go here and I want it to make a new layer each time. Um, you can go to some combined shapes if you'd rather, but for me, I just want it on new layer. And I'm going to zoom in really close. So I'm going to do Command Plus and I'm going to get really close up. Now, when you use the pen tool, you click a new place to draw new shapes. Now you can see that's given me sort of a very square angular shape, which is not what I want. So I'm just going to command Z that. Um, what I want is a very curved drip like shape. So if I click and then hold and drag, you can see it gives me these um, circular things, which are sort of handles. And those let me create something that is a little bit more curved and organic. So if I click and drag, you can see now I can get that curved edge again. And then I want it to curve up like that. And then I'm going to join them together. So that's given me a much more realistic sort of drip effect. I'm going to do another one. So I'm going to do a longer one here. Now, the thing with the pen tool is the less clicks that you do, the better. So the more clicking and repeating, the more sort of um, unrealistic and, and sort of janky it's going to look. Um, whereas if you do sort of fewer, now I'm actually going to make that a lot bigger. So I'm going to select that shape and make it bigger. Scooch it up a bit closer so we get a bit of contrast. So there's sort of those sort of drips. So you might want to do those um, a couple of times. I wouldn't do them everywhere. I think very carefully about where you do put them um, just for sort of that, that element of, of realism. And when you do this, you do want to be quite zoomed in. So I'm probably a little bit too far zoomed out. Um, now, I'm not quite happy with that. I want to move that. So you can see here you've got this mouse sort of pointer tool. That is a selection tool, a direct selection tool. Now what that lets me do is directly select that point there and then I can go in and these are my handles and I can adjust that. So if I'm not happy with anything, you don't have to redo it, you can go back in and adjust it. Now that to me feels a little bit better, so I'm going to go back to my normal tool and then I can just adjust that a bit more, get it in place where I want it and that feels a bit better to me. Um, I'm going to do another one on the K here, I'm not going to do the whole letters um, just for sort of ease and speed, but you want to sort of add these drips in so where where the spray paint might um get clogged up and sort of drip all over the place is really what we're looking for now again not perfectly happy with that so i'm going to go back in i'm going to edit this 
and get that sort of realistic curve that I'm looking for. Now a lot of this is just trial and error if you've not used this kind of tool before. So just be patient, just work with it and get something that you're happy with. So I'm going to leave that there for now. I could add some sort of extra shapes. So I could add some little sort of splashes and splotches. Like so. And again, I could add some up here where we started. Now we are going to add some extra sort of texture to all of this, so don't worry too much if you're not perfectly happy. So there we go. So we've got those sort of splashy, splodgy effects going on here. I'll make those a bit smaller because they feel a bit weird. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rasterize this. So rasterizing is sort of like a last resort. You only rasterize, especially with text, when you're perfectly happy with the font um, and the, the way you've written it, that you've not made any spelling mistakes and things like that, because once you rasterize it, you can't change that bit. So I'm going to rasterize this now that I'm happy with it. And then I'm actually going to select all of these, and I want these to be one layer. And again, don't do this until you're happy. If you want to go back and change those drips and those splodges and stuff, if you've already merged it, you can't do it. So make sure you're happy with it before you select merge. And I'm going to merge those layers, and you can see now we've got one flat shape. Um, we're going to take that one step further. So we're going to put a new layer on top, and we're going to look at our brushes. So we've got a paintbrush over here, and you see we've got a little folder up at the top in our options panel, which lets us look at what brushes we've got, what options we've got. So if we go here, we can see we've got wet media brushes, dry media brushes, and this is the one we want, special effects brushes. And we've got three scatter brushes, or splatter, or, or whatever you want to call them. Now, I'm doing this on a new layer because I want to be able to explore what I do with these brushes. And you can see that's huge, I don't want them that big. Um, now you might want to just play around with the size, see how it looks. Um, that's probably a little bit too small, so I'm going to go near 100. I'm just going, you can see it goes quite far as well. So I'm just going to play around with what they look like. It's on a new layer, so if I'm not happy with it, I can just delete that layer. And I'm just going to explore what they look like. You've got here, so if you go back into your brush settings, um, something that determines the angle, and you can see in this box how that changes it. Um, and I just want to look at sort of like the key points where the letters start and end, and I'm just adding this sort of um, splattered texture around it, like so. There we go. And obviously, if I click and drag, we get more. But I'm just doing sort of quick clicks, short clicks. So I don't want too much of it. Now. For me, that feels a little bit much, so I'm actually going to go in my eraser here, and I'm just going to clean it up a little bit, and again, you can change the size of that, and I'm going to take the hardness down as well, so it's a little bit softer, and I'm just going to clean that up a little bit. So I'm only going to leave a few bits in, mostly around the letters. I'm, I'm quite happy with some of this splatter going up like that, quite happy with that there, quite happy with that, and you can see it starts to make these larger bits that we put in earlier feel a bit more purposeful and feel a bit more like they, they live there and they're meant to be there. Now you can see I'm not rubbing out my letters because I'm on a new layer, so I can just rub out the effect that I've applied. And I just want little areas of it, I don't want too much, I've gone a bit overboard here. So I'm just going to go back in and I'm going to neaten it up a little bit, reduce it down a little, so it's a little bit more subtle. Um, and you can see we start to get something a bit more how we want it. Like so. So I'm going to leave that at that for now. Now I'm going to do the same thing on another layer. So exactly the same thing. So again, you can go back, you could try a different brush if you wanted to. So we've got three different brushes here, so I might try that one. Again, I might change my rotation. New layer, and do the same thing. So I'm just going to be a bit random with this one. There we go. Now this time, I'm going to set this to divide, and you'll see it then it cuts it out of the letters. So I'm not quite happy with that effect yet, so I'm going to choose a different brush. I'm going to go back to this one, because I want some more variation, I want some bigger bits. And the same thing, I'm just going to have a little look where I want that splatter effect to come out of my letters. Now I don't want it to fill the whole thing, because spray paint doesn't really look like that. So I just want little areas, 
And then the same thing again, if I'm not happy, I can go in and I can just rub some of those bits out. Always check what layer you're on when you're doing this, so you don't want to be on the wrong layer when you're doing this. Obviously, if you rub out too much, you can do Command Z, and that will get will bring it back for you and undo that action. So I'm just going to sort of bring it down here to be a little bit more subtle. So I just want it in small areas. Like that. So there we go. So that is my spray paint style typography. Obviously you could exaggerate some of these things, you could add more texture, you could um, increase the blur, you could increase the sort of dissolveness, you could add noise and grain to all of these things. Um, but for me, I'm quite happy with, with that. So what I want to do now is link those layers. So hold shift to select them, right click and link. And then I'm going to do Command G and Group, and I'm going to lock that group because I'm done with that design now. So I'm going to move on to something new now, and I'm going to look at this sort of um, magazine, sort of cutout style um, typography that's very well known for um, for the punk movement. So we're going to type out punk, but this time we want each letter to be different. So when you're cutting and doing sort of collage text and think about ransom letters um, in crime films. It's cut out of different letters from newspapers. So we want to do this one letter at a time. So draw a text box, type a letter, click OK. Draw a text box, type your next letter, click OK. So there we go. Because then that means that we can alter these individually. So you can see they're all on their own separate layers. Now I can rotate these so they look a little bit disjointed. Obviously, if you're cutting and pasting and collaging things by hand, it's never going to be perfectly straight or perfectly even. They might not all be the same size, and they're definitely not going to be all the same font. So I want you to look at different fonts. So I'm going to go back to sort of my all on the filter here, and I'm just going to pick a random selection of fonts. So I've got a bit of variety here. You want to try and think about the kind of fonts that you might find in magazines and newspapers that people might be sort of cutting out and collaging with. So we'll go for that. So we've got four different fonts. I might make this one bigger. And I might angle it a little bit. So we want it to feel all sort of mishmashed and disjointed. Now what I want to do is I want to go back to my pen tool. So same one that we used for the sort of drip effects on the punk text. This time we're going to make sure that it is set up as a new layer. So we definitely want new layers here. Um, I'm going to try and make sure that we do it below this layer. And I'm going to draw the sort of cut out bit that would go behind. That's not quite gone how I wanted it, so I'll just adjust that. There we go. Now I can change the colour of that, so I'm going to go for this bright yellow. And there we go. So then we can just keep doing that, and you should see, as we go along, we'll get these different shapes on their own layers, and we can change the colours as we go along. Now I'm going to do that on black, and I'm actually going to go and change my letter to white, so that we get that sort of contrast there. And I'm just going to carry on in the same sort of format. So we're looking for these sort of cut out shapes. I'm going to change that to a bright pink, leave that black. And then I'm going to do one more. Again, it doesn't matter if these are perfect shapes. It doesn't matter if they're perfectly square. Because when you're cutting and collaging things by hand, that's probably never going to happen. So we're just looking for a little bit of contrast. And I'm going to change that one to black. And I'm actually going to change the text color to this yellow. And there you have it. So you kind of want to go for contrasting complementary colours, so opposites. So I've got this bright hot pink and this yellow, and then I've got the black and the white. So we're creating a lot of contrast. Um, you want to make sure that all of these shapes are below those, le those text layers. And then again, once you've got something that you're happy with, select them all. Go to link layers, do command G to group, and then I'm going to lock that group. The last technique that we're going to do is sort of distorting the letter itself. So we're going to type out punk again. 
Now, this font is not appropriate. We want to go for something that's quite chunky um, and quite blocky. So I'm going to go for something aerial, most likely. That one's aerial black. So it's very heavy, very bold. Um, because the more you distort a letter, the harder it is to read. So you want to go for a text that's very simple and very bold and easy to read so that anything you do to it doesn't sort of um, distort it beyond readability. So I'm going to make it black and I'm going to rasterize this. Now, remember, if you're going to rasterize, make sure you spelt it right. Make sure you're happy with the font before you do it. But for in order to us to distort it, we need it to be rasterized. Now, what I'm going to do is go to my polygonal lasso. I'm going to go for sort of a sliced effect. So I'm just going to select bits that I want to look as though they've been sliced. So I've gone for the polygon lasso. I've made sure it's just on this setting here. I've selected it there, so I've drawn around the bit I want. And now I'm going to go back to my normal tool, make sure I'm on the right layer. And then when I move that, you'll see it just picks that piece that I've selected. So I'm going to go through that process um, of sort of slicing and dicing like that. Um, pick it up, move it away. So you can see we're starting to get these sort of sliced letter forms. So we're starting to distort it as though someone's gone through and just chopped it up. Um, and it gets that sort of really nice distorted effect. So you want to go with your polygonal lasso, select the piece that you want, and then you're just going back to your normal tool and moving that selection to make it look as though it's been sliced. So that's one technique. You can do Command-D to get rid of these sort of lines. We can do the same thing, however, we can make it look like ripped paper. So we can make it look as though someone's put it on paper and then they've ripped it up. So you should have downloaded some resources from Teams. Um, there's a whole area on punk and in there is this sort of um, paper effect. So I'm going to drop that onto my document and you can see we've got this ripped paper already. So I'm going to lay that over my text. And I actually want that top bit to be ripped like that. So I want that bit there. So what I'm going to do is use my magic wand here. Select that. Obviously I need my text rasterized in order to edit it. And now you can see I've got the selection. So if I hide my paper, you can see I've now got that selection out of that layer. So as long as you're on the layer that you want to select it out of, you can then change it. And it looks more like a ripped paper edge. I'm going to do the same thing again. So I'm going to Command-D to get rid of those wiggly lines. And I'm actually just going to use the bottom part of it now, like so. Layer over the bit you want it to be on. So always position it first. Magic wand. Hide the paper. Go to the layer where you want to move that from. And then you can see it gives me this selection, like so. And if I do Command-D, so there we've got sort of a ripped paper effect. So two different techniques for sort of cutting up letters, distorting them, changing them, and making them look as though they've been torn or cut apart. So that is our punk style typography. So we've got um, a spray paint sort of grungy stenciled effect. We've got this collaged, very traditional punk style effect. And then we've got this more distorted, ripped um, style typography. Obviously, you can do these in any colours you want. You can do them in any background you want. Um, you know, this should be a mishmash of text. This top one should be a very sort of handwritten style of text. And it wants to be on an angle, definitely, because most people write on an angle. Um, and you definitely spray paint at an angle. And then this one wants to be a much more simplistic, bolder, blocky style font. So have a go at those techniques. Have fun with them and see how you get on.